everybody. My name is Amy Hughes and I am a water education coordinator at the Boise Watershed. Thanks for joining me today for our continued online videos for learning opportunities at home. Today I'm going to talk about a watershed. Well, we all live in the Boise River watershed or the Boise watershed, and I'd like to talk about what that means. So a watershed is simply a land area that naturally collects water that sheds from the mountains and runs across land and eventually ends up in the lowest point. So in our case, the lowest point in our watershed is the Boise River. So ultimately, we live in the Boise River watershed if you live in the Treasure Valley. And the thing that's interesting about our watershed is the Boise River, as it flows through the Treasure Valley, it eventually connects to the Snake River, which will then connect to the Columbia River and finally to the Pacific Ocean. So that's an important thing to remember when we're thinking about ways we can protect the water because all of the water on Earth is connected. So you would imagine or you could think that what we do to the water here in Boise, Idaho, or how we treat it can ultimately have an impact on the Snake River, the Columbia River, and even the Pacific Ocean. So in this model behind me, this is a small representation of part of the Boise River watershed that we all live in. Here's another interesting way to think about what a watershed is. If we all were to take our hands and put them together like this to form a bowl, this would act as what a watershed does basically. So we can imagine that our thumbs are the high points in the watershed, mountains, foothills, things like that. And as our hands form that bowl, the low point where our hands are connected is actually the Boise River. So if you imagine dropping some water on your thumb, it's going to flow or shed downstream and get collected or trapped in the Boise River. So again, a watershed is simply a land area that naturally collects water that flows either from the mountains or across land and into the Boise River. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create our own paper watershed, which gives us more of a hands-on way to understand how watersheds work and how we're all connected to the water in our watershed. So in order to do this activity, you're going to need a few items. You'll need a piece of paper, white is preferable because the colors show up a little bit better, and three markers, a blue one, a green one, and a brown one. So go ahead and grab those materials and then we will all create a watershed together. So now that you have your white piece of paper, we're going to use this to create our watershed. I'm using cardstock. It's kind of a thicker paper. Um, I, like, I find it a little bit easier to use, but you guys, again, can use any type of white paper that you'd like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to crumple it up into a ball. So I know this seems kind of funny to crumple up a perfectly good piece of paper, but go ahead and do it anyway. And if you'd like to use scratch paper, that's just fine as well. So get it nice and crumpled. The better you crumple it, the better this activity works. Now, once you've got your paper crumpled into a ball, very slowly and very carefully, you're gonna open it up. Try not to rip it, but a couple of tears isn't going to hurt anything. So make sure that you've got your paper opened up, but don't flatten it out. Now that we've got our piece of paper ready to go, I like to look at mine and decide which side has the most bumps or high points. I'm going to use this side for my top, okay? So first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your brown marker. We're going to use our brown marker to represent ridges or high points. So if you guys will notice in the model behind me, a lot of my high points or ridges are also painted brown. So this is what I do. I take my marker on the side and you're just going to slowly start to trace or outline some of the high points. If you can see that. And then I like to do at least, I don't know, 
eight or ten because it gives your paper watershed a little bit more dimension. So go ahead and continue to mark the high points on your watershed. Okay, so hopefully you've marked several of your high points with your brown marker. Okay, again, really no right or wrong way to do this, but just do as many as you can so that you've got some nice dimension and depth on your watershed. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our blue marker, and our blue marker is going to represent water in our watershed. So if you guys will notice behind me, you can see a lot of the blue areas, and on this, it's representative of water bodies here in the Boise watershed. Things like the Boise River, the three reservoirs on the Boise River system, Anderson Ranch, Arrow Rock, Lucky Peak, Little Creeks like Grimes Creek or Morris Creek are all identified on the Boise River watershed. So we're going to take our blue marker and we are going to identify low points. So the low points would be the natural way or place water would flow as it starts to shed from your mountains in your watershed. Now, if you've crumpled your paper very well, you'll notice that you might have some little pockets that have formed. Those pockets are great to color in as a lake or imagine a reservoir, things like that. So imagine that you're a water drop and you fall on one of your high points and the path that your water is going to take as it sheds from the mountain. So go ahead and take a couple of minutes and fill in some blue water on your watershed. Okay, so now that we've got some water identified on our watershed, we're also going to use our green marker and our green marker is going to represent vegetation in our watershed. Things like trees, bushes, shrubs, grasses, stuff like that. So go ahead and take your green marker and just start to draw in some vegetation. So I am not an artist, so I don't try to draw very fancy things, but go ahead and really think about where in your watershed vegetation is going to be. So obviously we're going to have some near our water bodies and um, that would be where our riparian habitats are, things like that. Um, maybe you draw a wetland into your watershed. Okay, now we have our vegetation represented by the green marker. So I realize that this is a much simpler version of a watershed versus the model I have behind me, but I think it does a really great job of kind of showing you how water will move through a watershed. Another really fun thing to do if you have time is to actually spray some water with a squirt bottle onto your watershed and watch how it moves through the watershed. And when you do that, hopefully some of your water actually collects in those low areas that you colored blue. So we've just created our own paper watershed. I hope that activity helps you understand a little bit more about what a watershed is and how all of the water in our watershed is connected. So again, in the description, there is a link to our website that will take you to some additional resources and activities to do at home. I really appreciate you joining us for these weekly videos and make sure that you check back for new videos during the week. And um, let us know if you have any questions. We really appreciate your time and hope that everyone has an awesome day. Thanks so much, guys.